first, I wanted to stand up and wave and cheer a supportive family and friends. Stank, I'm sure you can find them out there. Show your love. It's a great honor for me to be here today. Now wait a second. I know that's such a cliche. You're thinking every graduation speaker here says that. It's a great honor. But in my case, it really is so deeply true. Being here is more special and more personal than most of you know. I'd like to tell you why. A long time ago, in this cold September of 1962, there was a Stevens Code up at this very university. The cop had a kitchen with a ceiling that had been cleaned by student that had been cleaned by student volunteers, probably every decade or so. Picture a college girl named Gloria climbing up high on the ladder, struggling that struggling to clean the filthy ceiling. Standing on the floor, a young boy named Carl was admiring the view. And that's how they met. They were my parents. So I suppose you could say, I'm the director of the, I'm the direct result of a kitchen and a chemistry experiment. My mom is here with us today, and we should probably go find a, and we should probably go find a spot, and a proper plaque on the ceiling that says "Thanks, my and dad." Everyone in my family went here to Michigan. My brother, my mom, and my dad, all of us. Um, my dad got a, or my dad got actually quantity discount. He got all three and a half of his degrees here. His PhD was communication science because they thought computers were just passing fad um, in what he earned it 44 years ago. He and mom made a big sacrifice for that degree. They argued at the times of they argued at the times over pennies while raising my newborn brother. My mom typed my dad's dissertation by hand. The kind of ironic giving was a computer science dissertation. This velvet hood that I'm wearing, this is my dad's. This diploma, yeah. This is the diploma that I have here, just like the one you're about to get. This is my dad's. And my underwear, oh, never mind, sorry. My father's father worked in Chevy plant in Flint, Michigan. He was an assembly line worker. He drove his two children here to another and told them, this is where you go into college. I know it sounds funny now. Both of his kids, both of his kids, both of his kids actually did graduate from Michigan. That was the American dream. His daughter Beverly is also with us today. Uh, my grandpa used to carry an alley pamer, a heavy iron pipe with a hunk of lead melted on the end. The workers made them during a sit-down protect. Um, the workers made them during a sit-down strike to protect themselves. When I was drawing, uh, when I was growing up, uh, we used the hammer whenever we needed to pound a stick or something into the yard. It is wonderful that people don't need to carry a heavy, blunt object for protection anymore. But just in case, I brought it with me. My father became a professor at Michigan State. And I was an incredibly lucky boy. A professor's life was pretty flexible. He was able to spend woodles of time raising me. Could there be any uh, better upbringing than university brats? What I'm trying to tell you, this is way, this is way more than a homecoming for me. It's not easy for me to express how proud I am to be here with my mom, my brother, and, um, and my wife, and with all of you at this amazing institution that is responsible for my very existence. I'm serious for all of you, and I'm serious for all of your family and friends. As all of us joined this great big Michigan family, I feel I've been a part of all of my life. What I'm most trying to tell you is I know exactly what it feels like to be sitting in your seat, like uh, in your seat listening. Some old Gasberg give a long-winded commencement speech 
Don't worry, I'll be brief. I have a story about following dreams. Or maybe more accurately, it's a story about finding a path to make those dreams real. You know what it feels like to wake up in the middle of the night with a vivid dream? You know how if you don't have a pencil and a pad by the bed, you will be completely gone by the next morning. I have one of those dreams when I was 23. When I suddenly woke up, I, I was thinking, what if we could download the whole web and uh, just keep the link? I grew the pen and I started writing. Sometimes it's important to wake up and uh, stop dreaming. I spend the middle of the night scribbling out the details and convincing myself it would work. Soon after, I told my advisor, Terry me one word. It would take a couple of weeks to. Uh, it would take a couple of weeks for me to download the web. He nodded knowingly, fully aware. It would take much longer to download the web. But wise enough not to tell me. The optimism of UC is often underrated. Amazingly, at the time, I had no thought of building a search engine. The idea was even underrated. But much later, we happened upon a better web ranking. Uh, we made a really great search engine and Google was born. When a really great dream shows up, grab it. When I was here in Michigan, I've actually been taught how to make dreams real. I know it sounds funny. Um, that is what I learned in summer camp converted into a training program called Leader Shape. Yeah, we got a few out there. Their slogan is to have a healthy disregard for the impossible. They encouraged me to pursue a crazy idea at the time. I wanted to build a personal rapid transit system on campus to replace the buses. Yeah, you're still working on that here. It was a futuristic way of solving our transportation problem. I still think a lot about transportation. You never lose a dream. It just incubates as a hobby. Many things people labor hard to do now, like cooking, cleaning, and driving will require much less human time in the future. And we actually build the solutions. I think it's just often easier to make progress on mega ambitious dream. I know that sounds completely nuts. But since, but since no one else is uh, crazy enough to do it, you have a lot of competition. In fact, there are so few people this crazy that I feel I know them all by first name. They all travel, if they, are, they all travel as if they are pack dogs and they stick to each other like glue. The best people want to work hard. The best people want to work on the big challenges. Um, this is what this is this is what happened with Google. That is what happened with Google. Our mission is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. How can that not get excited? We already didn't start Google actually because my co-founder said again that we're too worried about uh, dropping out of PhD program. None of you have that issue it seems. You are probably on the right track if you feel like a sidewalk worm during a rainstorm. Um, um, that is how we. Uh, that is how we. And uh, that is how we felt. That is about. That is about. That is about how we felt. After we maxed out three credit cards, buying hard disks off the back of the trunk. Uh, that was actually first. That was actually the first hardware for Google. Parents and friends, more credit cards always help. What is the one sentence summary of how you change the world? Always work hard on something uncomfortably and exciting. As a PhD student, I had actually three projects I wanted to do work. Thank goodness my advisor said, why don't you work on the web for a while? He gave me some, good, he gave me some seriously good advice because, because the web was growing with people and activity, even in 1995. Technology 
and especially the internet can really help you be lazy. Lazy? What I mean is that what I mean is a group of three people can write software that ten, the ten millions can use and enjoy. Can three people answer the four million times? Find the leverage in the world so you can be truly lazy. Overall, I know it seems like the world is crumbling out there. It's a really great time in your life to get a little crazy, follow your curiosity, and be ambitious about it. Don't give up on your dream. The world needs you all. So here's my final story. On a day like today, you might feel exhilarated, like you've been just you've been just shut out of a cannon at a circus, and even and even invincible. Don't never forget the incredible feeling. But also always remember that the moment we have with friend and family, the chance that we have, the chance that we have to do, the chance that we have to do things that might make a big difference or in the world, or able to make a small difference to the ones we love. All those wonderful chances that life gives us, life also takes away. It can happen fast and a whole lot sooner than you think. In late March 1996, soon after I started move, uh, in late March 1996, soon after I started to move to move back to Stanford for grad school, my dad had a difficulty breathing and they drove to the hospital. Two months later, he died. I was completely devastated. After a startup, after falling in love, and after so many of uh, life's adventure, I found myself. I found myself thinking about my dad. I found myself thinking about my dad. Lucy and I were following in steaming hot village, walking through narrow street. There are wonderfully friend, there are wonderfully friendly people everywhere. But it was a desperately hot place. People use the bathroom inside. And it um, and it flowed out into the open gutter and straight into the river. Lucy and, I were from, Lucy and I were rural India, one of the few places where polio still exists. We touched the boy with a limp leg, the result of a paralysis from polio. Uh, polio is transmitted thicker to oral, usually through filthy water. Well, my dad had polio. He went on to the, he went on to the, uh, he went on a Tennessee to the he went on a trip to Tennessee uh, in his first grade, and he cut it. He was hospitalized for two months, and he had to be transported by military DC three back home. His first flight. He wrote, "Then I had to stay in bed for over a year before he before before he started back to school." It is actually from a quote. Um, this is actually a quote from his, first, his fifth grade autobiography. He had a difficulty. Uh, he had a difficulty breathing his whole life. The complications of polio were what took him off. What took him from us too soon. The complications of polio were what took him from us to soon. Uh, he would be... Uh, I think he would have been... Uh, I, I think he would have been very upset that polio still persists, even though we have a vaccine. He would have been equally upset as the back in India, we have a polio. We have a polio uh, on our shoes, walking through contaminated gutter that spread the disease. We are spread the disease. We are spread the virus with our every footsteps, right under the beautiful kids playing everywhere. Well, the world on the verge of eliminating polio. 
with 328 people infected so far. Let's get it, let's get it eradicated soon. Perhaps one of you will do that. My dad was valedictorian of Flint Mandible High School of 1956. Of, uh, my dad was valedictorian of Flint Mandible High School class of 1956 of about 90 kids. I, I, happened, I, I happened across graduate speech recently and, and it blew me away. 53 years later, uh, he said, we are entering a changing world. Um, one of automation and employment exchange, employment change, where education is an economic necessity. Uh, we will be increased period of time uh, to do as we wish at our work week or retirement age continue to decline. The way we wish that are true. We shall take part in our richness and development in science and medicine and industry that we can only dream of today. It is, it is said the future of any nation can be determined by care and preparation given its use. If all the youth of America were as fortunate in securing an education as we have been, the future of the United States can be more bright than it is today. Well, my dad was alive today. The thing I think he'd be most happy about is that Lucy and I have a baby in Hopper. Yeah, it's Cat Lucy. I think he would be annoyed that I hadn't got my PhD yet, thanks to Michigan. My dad was ho my dad was my dad was so full of excitement about new things. Uh, to this day, often to this day, I often wonder what he would think about the new. Um, to this day, off. My dad was. My dad was my dad was so full of excitement about my dad was so full of excit my dad was so full of insight of excitement about new things. To this day, to this day, I often wonder what he. To this day of to this day, I often wonder what he what he would. To this day, I often wonder what he would think about. What he would think about. To this day, to this day, I often wonder what he would think about. Some new development. Well. If he were here today, it'd be one of the best day of his life. He'd be a kid in a candy store for a day. He'd be young again. Many of us are fortunate enough to be here with family and friends. Some of us have dear friends and family to go home to. And who knows, perhaps, some of you like Lucy and I are dreaming of future families of your own. Uh, just like me? Some of you, uh, just like me, uh, your families brought you here and you brought down here. Please keep them close and remember they are what really matters in life. Thanks, ma'am. Thanks, Lucy. And thank you all very much.